For this assignment, we are going to be doing an achromatic and a monochromatic scale. And we're also going to be doing two paintings from the same photo reference. And we're going to apply the achromatic scale to one painting, and we're going to apply the monochromatic scale to the other painting, both from the same photo reference. So the first thing we're going to do is the achromatic scale. And remember, achromatic means that there's a complete absence of color. So it's just going to be basically a black and white scale with neutral, gla neutral grays. So the first thing I did was I, on a sheet of Bristol board, you're going to want to make sure you paint your swatches on the Bristol board, is I measured out a sheet of 8 by 10 paper, and then I gridded it off into one inch units. Okay, so as you can see, there's probably about 80 one inch units, okay? And so what's gonna happen is, is when I start mixing the black and the white to try to get, to s try to resolve my, my scale, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start painting every other one and I'm gonna end up cutting them all out and then trying to line them up so I get a very fluid, tr very fluid transitional um, achromatic scale. Okay, so that's the first thing you wanna do. Eight by 10, Bristol board, Grid it out, one inch units, vertical and horizontal. You're going to end up with about 80 uh, one inch swatches. The second thing you're going to want to do on another sheet of Bristol board is grid out a five by six inch pictorial area for what's going to be your painting, which you're going to paint from your achromatic scale. It's basically going to be your black and white and gray painting. Okay, so you're going to want to grid that out too. Um, I also left like a one inch, two inch border around it. You just want to have like at least a one inch border around the painting itself. So you can paint over the edges and then you're going to end up cutting it out. Next thing you're going to do is print out one of the black and white photographs um, that you were going to be able to use for the assignment on the assignment sheet and print it out. And again, before you print it out, try to go into setup for sizing and try to size it at five by six. So when you print it out, it'll be approximately five by six. If it's not absolutely perfect, it's not really going to be about a big deal because you're going to be able to paint, you know, like if it's a quarter inch or even a half inch over out, out of, outside of the parameters, it, it'll be okay. So I'm just using this photo as a reference for the video. It has a full range and value and it has strong contrast. Okay, so you're gonna whatever photo you're gonna end up picking um, from the assignment sheet, it's totally up to you. But you're only gonna do you're only gonna pick one, because remember you're gonna do the achromatic scale that's based on the photo reference. You're gonna apply it to to the photo when you do the painting for the achromatic painting, and then you're gonna use the same photo and you're gonna paint it again. But when you do the monochromatic scale, you're gonna apply the monochromatic scale to the monochromatic painting. So as you can see, this is the photo printed out, cut. It's five by six inches. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna put trace over the top of it, and you are going to start blocking out all the different areas of value in terms of shapes. So you're gonna to wanna to like go in and start blocking out all the shapes a value throughout the whole photograph. And you wanna to try to get as much of a range with the grays and obviously the black and the white as possible. You don't wanna end up, because remember you're trying to match whatever, whatever neutral grays you have in your value scale and the black and the white. So you have a, basically a full range when you're done with your, with your painting. So remember after you trace over your black and white photo, you're going to turn, over, turn it over and you're going to put with a darker lead, preferably a 5B all the way up to an 8B, you're going to put a darker lead all the way back over the back side of what you traced and then you're going to put it over the top of your five by six inch piece that you 
the perimeter that you laid out. Remember, then you're going to draw back over all your shapes that you isolated. You're going to draw back over, and then you're going to end up with essentially the whole deconstructed shape structure that you're taking from the photograph. And now this is going to be wherein you're going to try to paint and match the value structure when you start doing your scales and you start doing your painting. And one of the easier ways to do this, obviously, rather than just doing a full straight painting, especially if you're not familiar with like trying to match values and, you know, trying to have that kind of fluidity in the value range is that it's almost going to be like paint by numbers. And then you can make adjustments from, from that point on when you start, you know, in terms of detail and stuff like that. But it just, it helps you in isolating the value structure in terms of percentages from the photograph itself. And then that'll just make it a lot easier to, when you're mixing your, your values for your achromatic scale, you can start also applying them to the painting at the same time. And then you can refine them after that. Okay, the next thing you're going to want to do is tape on a separate sheet of Bristol board your gridded out one inch swatches that you put on the 8x10 sheet of paper with pencil and then tape your transferred deconstruction of all the shapes from your photograph. Tape it right next to it on the Bristol board and then just lay out the photograph that you're going to be working from. And then you're going to want to get a cup of water and you're going to want um, like a plate or a sh little piece of like wax paper or something that you can mix your paints on um, to kind of act as a palette that's kind of disposable. Um, if you have something else, that's fine, but just make sure that you use something that's not too absorbent because the paint will dry a lot faster. And then you're going to use, and my tubes are obviously going to be a lot bigger than yours, um, just because they're from my studio. You're going to use your white acrylic paint, your white acrylic paint. Remember, make sure it's acrylic paint and not oil paint. And your black acrylic paint. Okay, so I've got, you know, I'm using this little plate as my palette. I've got my white acrylic paint. I've got my black acrylic paint. And then what you're going to want is to use a brush from the set that has like a, a flat that's like has a little bit more width like this or you could use a round that has a little bit more width like this the brushes you want to avoid at all costs are ones that are really tiny like these okay because it'll be very difficult to paint in each unit if you're using a really small brush and it will take forever so try to use one of your wider brushes either one of your flat or, or, or a round that's like equivalent to like a like an eight or a ten in terms of the size um, so this is what this is everything you want to have laid out like this when you start you know, have everything laid out on your Bristol board your one inch swatches gridded out your transferred deconstruction of your photograph on your other five by six piece of Bristol board your photograph that you're going to be working from palette or something in terms of some disposable wax paper or paper plate, something that's not too absorbent, a cup of water, your brushes or brush, and then your black and your white paint. So I'm going to put some white paint out. I'm not going to put a lot. You definitely do not need a lot. And I'm going to put some black paint out. Okay, and then I have the two brushes I'm going to be using are my kind of wider flat and I have this little tiny one too. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tiny bit of water down on the little plate or palette. And I'm going to start taking some white. I'm going to put some white over here like so. So I'm just picking up some white from the main pile and I'm putting more white over here. Okay, now, since white is going to be the highest value in your scale and obviously in your painting, you're going to use straight white and you are going to paint it in the first swatch. And when, I, when, you, when you see what I'm painting like this is that I'm going flat 
and I'm stretching it out like so. And then I'm going to try to find the lightest light in my painting and I'm going to start applying the white in my painting to where I think I'm seeing it in my painting. Any, any areas that I think are going to be white. There was a tiny bit of uh, There's a little residue of a value on my brush, so it, it might be starting to look like not pure white, and I can go back and I can change that. But basically what you're doing is you're trying to apply where you're seeing the lightest parts. And I'm just, I'm just kind of blocking out the big shapes for now, because remember, I'm going to be able to go back in and add more detail later. Okay, so I'm just laying down the first value in the painting, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I am going to take a tiny bit of black with my little tiny brush, tiny bit, I'm gonna put it right there. You can see I bar there's barely any there, okay? And now I'm gonna mix that very well, make sure it doesn't bunch up on my brush, the gray. And then I'm going to do the next swatch over here. And I'm going to go flat again, like so. So you can see that it's slightly darker than the first one. And then I'm just going to keep doing that back and forth. I'm going to add a tiny bit more black, just a tiny bit. I'm going to mix it very, 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 very well. Again, if you don't mix it well, you're going to get fluctuations in the value and you don't want any fluctuations at all. You want it to be as flat as possible. And then I'm gonna paint again the next swatch, like so. I'm go flat, out like that. Then again, I'm gonna take a tiny bit more black, a little bit more. Okay, and you're just gonna start moving progressively up with the values that are gonna slowly get darker because you're adding a tiny bit more black to the white. And what's going to happen is, is you're going to get to a point where you're going to start going in the opposite direction, where you're going to want to add white to the black. Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to get as many of these swatches as possible. So when you cut them all out, you're going to be able to get a very fluid transition between them. And you'll have a lot to work with. Instead of trying to do them from zero <clears throat> to 100% right off the bat, it's very difficult to, di to do that and to match it like that. Okay, so don't, I would encourage you not to try to do that. Um, it's obviously you're going to have to paint more of these. It's going to take more time, um, but it, it'll just make life a lot easier if you have enough of these swatches to work from. Um, and so, so you can see they're slightly getting darker. So again, also in the combination of adding and getting you know the percentage of the values are going to start getting darker and darker keep going back to your painting and then adding the values where you think they're going to be appropriate in your painting okay and remember you're just you're just trying to block it out in terms of the shapes of the value um, and you're just going to slowly start building this up and because this is acrylic paint when it dries if you need to go back up and make adjustments with adding things that are darker or lighter or, or, or whatever, whatever you want to do, um, you're going to be able to do that because acrylic, you can paint on top of acrylic can paint. You can paint acrylic on top of each acrylic on top of acrylic um, because it's water based. And um, so if you need to make, you know, certain adjustments to things, it, it won't, it won't be different you have to go back and, add more value. So just, you, you're basically just adding black to the white, black to the white, a tiny, 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 tiny bit. And, um, and just make sure again, that you, you have to mix it really, really well. And it's going to take some time and some patience, you, but you just don't want, like again, any kind of fluctuations in the value when you lay it down on the swatch because you want it to be completely flat. So when you cut them all out and line them up together and you get that 
what's called the fluting. You get this really beautiful fluid transition from light to dark. And, and that's basically your goal. And again, just keep going back, adding the swatch value, find the value in your photograph, start applying it to your painting, and then just slowly start building it up. And then, like I said, at the very end, you're gonna be able to go back and make adjustments to the painting in terms of mixing, because you'll, you'll feel pretty good about how you've mixed the white with the black, um, and you'll get a sense of how to manipulate that and things should get um, basically a lot easier after that. And now, after I've painted all my swatches and my achromatic painting, I am going to now cut out my swatches with a very sharp knife, exacto knife, a sharp blade. Don't use a dull blade. I am going to cut out all my swatches and I'm going to try to line all of them up and try to put them together to make a fluid scale, an achromatic scale, which I've painted. So I've painted so many swatches now that I should have enough of them to be able to get some fluidity with all of them and create a fluting, which is what it's called when you're trying to make a scale that has a very nice transition in the scale. And I'm going to do this in a way where, again, like you've seen in previous videos, where I'm not gonna harm myself in doing this, and my cutting with the ruler and the X-Acto knife, keeping the blade away, angle away from my fingers, and I'm gonna cut up these swatches, and then I'm gonna try to put them together in a fluid way to make the including in the transition of the achromatic scale as fluid as possible. Once you've got all your swatches cut out, then what you're going to want to do is start lining them up and trying to find a good transition that's going to be fluid. You don't want huge leaps. So for instance, you don't want something like that, that's way, 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 way too extreme. So you have to go back with the ones you've cut out and try to find um, kind of a nice fluid fluidity occurring. Um, if it ends up being that you need to cut it, that you need to paint another one to find 
a break somehow in between them, then you're just gonna have to go back and paint another one. Um, but again, you do not want huge leaps at all. You wanna make sure that the fluidity, and you're gonna end up with 11. Um, you wanna make sure that they're kind of as fluid as you can get, as close as you can get. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but again, you just, what you don't want is something like that, where it's just, it's just egregious, like that the, that the, that the transition's just too extreme. Um, so just keep going back and forth with all the ones you have, and sometimes like, just put ones above each other that you think that are very similar after you've cut all of them out. Um, and then you can just kind of find the best one um, out of all of them, and then just pick them from there. And you hopefully will be able to flute it the right way, where in it just has like a really nice transition. So you can see these higher values, like I have a lot that are really similar with the higher value. Um, and I'm noticing that in this light, it's kind of probably hard to see in the video. So now I have 11. Um, I might have to go back and these are really similar. I might have to just up one of these a little bit. Um, but I've also cut out the main painting so I have my full range and value with my grays and my white, my black. Um, and when, remember, when you're painting, you're painting. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. You're just, uh, this is not a, it's not a painting class. It's just all you're trying to do is match the values as closely as you can. Um, so once you feel good about your value scale, then just put your swatches aside and your painting aside your achromatic painting, and then this is something I'm assuming you're going to be able to do on Tuesday, um, working into Thursday, and then I will post a video to how to do the monochromatic scale and painting um, on Wednesday.